Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Uh, tonight, we are going to continue with our study of the book of John, and we're going to pick up where we left off last time. Uh, we are on chapter 1, verse 35. But bef uh, before we get started, let me ask uh, Brother Eric to say hi to everybody. Hello, everybody. It's good to be here. It's me again. The whole mole. Okay, back to you. All right, please subscribe to Brother Eric's channel. And uh, if you have not watched the previous episodes uh, of this study, uh, they are uploaded on my YouTube channel, Sin City Preacher. Um, I'm happy if you're watching it live right now, but uh, it will be very helpful to you if you do watch it from the beginning, and particularly the first few verses uh, of the Gospel of John are especially important and powerful. So I hope you will go back and watch that. But right now we're going to uh, pick up in verse 35 of chapter 1. I'm going to read it in the KJV, and then I'll probably end up looking at it in the Amplified later because uh, it amplifies it, and it may be helpful to us. Okay, so verse 35 says, um, Again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Uh, well, I, uh, I mentioned earlier that... Uh, uh, I think, I, I don't know if it was on the study of John or if we were studying uh, early church history or Proverbs or, uh, or maybe it was Job. I don't know. But I, I remember talking about this recently that I, I've always been a little bit puzzled why Peter uh, is always given so much credit uh, for the time when he identified Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God. You can find that in, I think it's in Matthew or Mark, but it's also in Luke, uh, chapter 9, verse uh, 20, 21. Jesus asked his disciples, oh, who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And, um, and uh Jesus says, well, you didn't get this from man. You got it from my Father in heaven as he revealed it to you. And he says, from this point on, you're going to be known as Simon. You'll be known as Peter, the rock. And the Roman Catholics, of course, take a hold of that whole uh, section of verses there to identify him as the first pope. And the and the, that's um, that uh, he is, Peter is the rock. But the truth is, that the rock that Jesus um, is talking about is the statement by Peter, the statement that he is the Christ. That's the rock, that's the foundation of our Christianity. It's not the person that she, uh, of Peter that's the rock. Um, but I've always been, not always, but for probably the last few years, I've been a little bit puzzled why Peter gets so much credit for identifying him because other people identify him as the Christ, the Son of God, uh, uh, before that point. And we already have here in, uh, in the first chapter of John, let's back up just a little bit. I remember that uh, John calls him, uh, where was it? Uh, let me see. John calls him the Christ. Let me see. He identifies him in what verse? Uh, well, um, in verse 29, he identifies him as the Lamb of God. We talked about that, but I think he also identifies him at that point as the Son of God. Yeah, yeah. In verse 34, and this is John speaking. It says, and I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. So as far as I can see, the very first time Jesus is uh, described as, as uh, his, uh, attributed 
with being the Son of God, it's here by John the Baptist. I know that several other, couple of the other apostles identify him as the Son of God, and these things happen long before Peter does it. I don't know if you have any theories on that, or if you've ever paid any attention to that, brother, but uh, what, what is your uh, response to that? Uh, it totally escaped me, Brother Luke. I've never had uh, thought about that. I had thought a lot about uh, how the Catholics take uh, the one verse that we previously mentioned about uh, Peter being called the rock. I believe that translates to little rock. Uh, what did you think about that? Yeah, uh, there's uh, there's two different forms of the word Petra, and I, I don't remember off the top of my head, but the term is used twice, and of course, uh, um, you have little rock and you have big big rock in Greek, and it, it, it's talking about the the Peter. He, he was called Peter instead of Simon, and Peter or Cephas uh, in in uh, I think in Greek it's Cephas, but he. Uh, he was um, called that because he was called, that means rock, but little rock. The big rock or the foundation of Christianity is this statement by Peter that this is the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's the foundation of Christianity, the identity of who Jesus is. And, and uh, but the interesting thing is that, uh, you know, John the Baptist says it here in chapter one, right in the very beginning when Jesus first comes on the scene. Um, I think very soon we're going to see another one of the apostles refer to him in that way. And then there's another time coming up later where he's in a boat with the apostles and one of them calls him the son of God. Uh, I don't know if anybody watching uh, has any theories on this. Uh, maybe you can tell me, but uh, I've always been amazed about how this this uh, time when when Peter steps forward, and, and you know, first of all, Jesus sent the apostles around the countryside to preach, and and, and uh, when they come back, Jesus says, "Well, what are the people saying about me? Who 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 are they saying I am?" And and he gets a variety of answers, you know, just like John the Baptist was asked, "Are you the prophet? Are you Elias? Are you who are you?" Well that people were saying all those things about Jesus and they have these different theories. So then Jesus asked the apostles, but okay, that's what the people are saying, but who do you say that I am? And Peter was the one that stepped forward to answer the question and said, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. And it's, it's, it's a really big to do made about this, this, this statement identifying Jesus. But what puzzles me is that he's, already identified that way uh, several times before that. Okay, maybe it's more significant to me than it is to other people, but if you have any theories on that, let me know. Let me go back to the text here. Um, 35 was, uh, okay, it says, again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, behold, the Lamb of God, uh, and the two disciples heard him and they followed Jesus. Uh, have you ever noticed how uh, people uh, oftentimes, when they meet Jesus, uh, they just start following him? Like, <laughs> I, I muted myself right, right in the middle of my statement here. Uh, like, I think when Peter and Andrew first meet him or something, they just like drop their nets and they just start following him. And they, they, they stop being a fisherman and becoming uh, disciples. Uh, it's a, it's a, isn't it amazing to you how people, they, they meet him and decide they're going to follow him. They just drop everything else in their life and, and follow him. Oh, it's not amazing at all, Brother Luke. Uh, when Jesus speaks, uh, it don't matter who or what you are, it's going to listen. Well, we know that not everybody responds in that way. I mean, there, there's most of the people who heard Jesus and met Jesus, they didn't respond that way. They didn't follow him. He, only a, a small percentage of the people uh, ended up following him. Okay, uh, I retract that previous statement. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I would like to think that if I met him, 
2,000 years ago at that time, if I lived in and met him, that, that I would react the way that Peter and Andrew did and the way that these disciples did. They just, they had been following John the Baptist and he said, that's the Lamb of God. And they just went and followed, started following Jesus. Um, I think these might be come two of his apostles later. Let me, I don't know who they are, if it's, they're identified at this point. Okay, uh, and, the, and the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following and saith unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being uh, interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? He saith unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. Um, well, it doesn't tell us where he abode. I don't imagine it was very impressive. Um, he talks about how, uh, the, you know, um, 